Okay, I hasten somewhat to set this camera up again to film a little bit of footage of actual gas production with a pulse width modulator because one never knows when one might have an explosion take place in the lab that's going to put a temporary halt to any experiments that you might have going on at the time. So I've got 14 and a half volts, a little bit less, going into the pulse width modulator. Uh, you see the scope sweep at a zero voltage reference, and I am at five volts per division. Let me go to two volts per division and recenter it. Okay. Now I turn the DC input on, and you see the voltage rise a little bit. That's the residual voltage that's sitting on the cell right now. So let me begin turning up the pulse width duty cycle. And notice as soon as I begin applying a pulse voltage to the cell that goes positive and the overall DC value of the cell rises to almost 2 volts, I also get a very strong negative pulse in the other direction. Now at about 6 amps, turn the frequency up, and I don't really see any major increase in the residual voltage of the cell as I increase the frequency. I don't know if you can hear that singing of the oscillator, but that is the actual power MOSFET creating sound waves against the back of the chassis of the project box. That's about 10 amps right there. All right, and my oscillator just stopped. Did I blow a fuse? Well, another interruption to the work at Sub-Zero Labs. Well, it's official. I have my first fallen hero of the pulse width modulator experiments. The first IRFP064 bites the dust. Uh, we'll be giving it a proper hero's burial with honors. takes care of that. Perhaps I will be reverting to bipolar transistors when all is said and done. Uh, hopefully I don't have any more of these. I'm not sure what I would do to further suppress the transients across the, across the device to keep it from burning out. So, we'll see what happens. Okay, I'm pretty sure I know what happened to the uh, first transistor, they have a peak voltage rating of 60 volts. Now my scope right now is showing you 0 volts and I am measuring 10 volts per division. So if you see a spike go all the way to the top of the screen, that's 60 volts. In fact, let me just move it down to the next division, down right about there. 
Okay, now that's zero volts right there. Okay, so let me... Turn it on. And there you see it. 60 volts. 60 volt spikes across the drain to source. And you repeat that process while the device is putting out heavy amounts of current and it's not going to last very long. So I need to address that right away and figure out how I'm going to suppress those transients to allow me to continue to uh, utilize MOSFETs in this series of experiments.